At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I see Oh At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I see Oh There is power in your name yes sure miracles happen in your name oh as we lift a voice in praise it's you that i see it's you that i see oh at the center of it all it's you that I see, it's you that I see, yes it's you, at the center of it all, Lord it's you that I see, it's you that I see, sure it's you, there is power in your name. Oh my God, miracles happen in your name. Yes, they do. As we lift our hands and pray, it's you that we see. It's you that we see. Yes, sure, there is power in your name. So much. Miracles happen in your name, oh yes, and as we lift the voice in praise, it's you that we see, it's you that we see, there is Lord, there is power in your name, so much. Miracles happen in your name. Yes, they do. And as we leave the voice in praise, Lord, it's you that we see. It's you that we see. Oh, yeah. And as we leave the voice in praise, it's you that we see. It's you that we see. This is everybody. Welcome once again. It's your favorite girl, Princess Clinton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> On here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we also get to study the King James Version of the Bible and it becomes a practical reality for us because we're able to see ourselves in the scripture and then we can leave it. Talking is cheap. Everybody can talk the Bible. Everybody can talk scripture. But the difference is made for people who can actually leave the scriptures out. And we're studying the scripture so that it can become a part and parcel of us so we can be able to leave the word and get blessed. Of course. And we also create a King James Version audio Bible that you can listen to grow your faith. The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we're always exhilarated and excited and just in awe of what God always gets to dish out to us, shows us on a chapter a day, every single time. Lord, we are super duper grateful. We do not take all that you do for us with us and in us for granted we are sure that today you're going to speak to us in grand style so guys get ready we also celebrate birthdays people we celebrate birthdays here on a chapter day so if you want us to celebrate your birthday it's as easy as abc you just send us your birthday in the comment section or you find our contact details in the description box on facebook and then you send us your birthday would we'll save it in the firmest birthday book and then when it's your day we'll celebrate you today 
We're studying Daniel chapter 4, and he has 37 verses. Let's take that again. Daniel 4, and he has 37 verses. We've seen lots and lots of miracles so far. We've seen lots and lots of promotions so far. And I'm sure someone is in for another special session today. I love the book of Daniel. And that's what um, just got dropped in my spirit right now. It says that when you are qualified for a promotion, God gives you a test. Every single time you qualify for a promotion, God gives you a test. You have to write the test and pass the test before you get to your next level, right? So these people, the three Hebrew boys and Daniel, they were working, they were, they, were, they were slaves, basically. And then when it was time that was due for their promotion, they were given a test. Okay, go and be in the king's court and, you know, be there for three years, enjoy just this kind of luxurious kind of life, you know. And then they said, no, the Lord says we shouldn't do that. We should eat um whatever they call it, vegetables and all that. And that's exactly what they did. So they passed their test. And they were due for a promotion. So they got a promotion. And then it got to a point where they, um, Daniel had to interpret the king's dream. Not only interpret the king's dream. He had to know what the king's dream was. That's not a regular thing. That's not a usual thing. The usual thing is, I tell you what my dream is. And then maybe you kind of find out if you have an understanding of what it's about. And then you tell me what you think. That's a regular thing. But this was abnormal. And so he had to tell the dream and then go ahead and interpret the dream. And he did. He was due for a promotion. He got another one. And then when the three Hebrew boys were also due for a promotion, they were now given that other trial, that other exam, that other thirst, that other test of having to bow down to an unknown God. Child of God, don't get worried. Don't get worked up or don't get bitter. Don't get angry. Don't get grumbly when you have trials and temptations. Rather, look at the good in it. The good in it is that God is setting you up for a promotion. When he, when he has trained you and built capacity in you enough, and then he knows you're qualified for your next level, he sends the test. He allows the test. And then when you pass your test, you get a promotion. We don't know what the test of today is going to be, but we're looking forward to it. And it's just showing us the various kinds of tests that children of God or people who are standing can go through. And sometimes we begin to think like, maybe it's going to happen like this. No, yours is not going to happen like this. We're not in the kingdom setting. Wherever you are, it's not a kingdom setting. Wherever you are, you're not in slavery. So there are different things that are happening to you that are very challenging that are like your own situation. It's like the Hebrew boy kind of situation, the Hebrew boy's kind of situation. So it's not necessarily like you are having the exact same thing happening to you, but it's a similitude of what it is. And for the basic part, the basic understanding is you will get challenges. I am really hoping and trusting God that this was on. It looked like I just kind of realized that our microphone was not on, guys. I'm really trusting God that it was. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I wish someone was on Facebook to tell us if this was on or not. If it wasn't on, we have to go back to the beginning. Because the Lord is actually telling us a whole lot right now. The Lord is actually telling us a whole lot right now. I am so sorry. I need to be sure that this is working. I always need someone to be here to tell us that this is working. Oh, sh there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search you all eternity long and find there is none like you. 
There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search through all eternity long and find there is none like you. I want to be sure that we're alive, guys. Oh my God, Father, I'm hoping that this thing is working from the beginning. It's good. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Yes, it's you at the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Sure, miracles happen in your name. Yes, they do. As we lift our hands and pray. It's you that we see, it's you that we see. Yes, it's you, there is power in your name. Oh Lord, miracles happen in your name. Yes, they do. As we leave the voice and pray, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Oh my God, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Oh yes, Lord, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Yes, my Lord, there is power in your name. There is miracles happen in your name. Sure they do. As we lift our voice and pray, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Yes, it's you. There is power in your name. There is miracles happen in your name. Sure they do, as we leave the voice and pray, it's you that we see, it's you that we see. Hey, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, Lord, it's you that I see. Yes, it's you. At the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, yeah. there is power in your name, sure there is, and miracles happen in your name, sure they do, and I believe to voice and pray. It's you that we see. It's you that we see. Oh, there is power in your name. There is miracle happening in your name. Sure they do. And as we leave your voice and pray, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Hey, and as we leave the voice and pray, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Greetings, 
everybody welcome once again it's your favorite girl princess kita queen of hearts and laughter <laughs> on here we get to know who we are in christ the boy possess the things we can and cannot do we should or should not do so that we can live a successful christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with god in heaven heaven in view that's the whole idea and while we're at it we also get to study the king james version audio bible and we create an audio bible as well so that you can grow your faith and then for the bible studies we can get to know the word of god and leave the word of god talk is cheap but the doing makes the difference i always say that because the truth is even the devil can speak the word of god but he can leave it so if you make the difference you have to be able to leave the word of god let it become a practical reality for you let it become an everyday lifestyle for you okay people okay 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 so we're getting on with the chapter a day for today and like i'm saying today we are having daniel chapter 4 and he has 37 verses daniel chapter 4 and he has 37 verses and i was saying something that the holy spirit dropped in my heart and say when you're due for a promotion you get a test when you're due for a promotion you get a test because it's only the test that will show that you're truly qualified and you are capable for that um, assignment, you know, that promotion is an assignment that God has given you. So we, we've seen it so far when we started with the book of Daniel. And these guys were just regular slaves, right? And they got to this Babylon country of a place. And then the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, actually saw that he needed some people. So... These people who are slaves have been built capacity, they've built capacity enough through being humble, obedient, and skillful in all that they were doing, and they were due for a promotion. So God caused King Nebuchadnezzar to need a couple of people to be able to work in his government from the slaves. Yep, that's exactly what was happening. And so Daniel and his brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were chosen. And then they were due for another promotion. And so the king had a dream. You get? They had been qualified. They had built capacity and grown enough. And God saw that he wanted to promote Daniel. And so he gave the king a dream. The abnormal thing about this one is people always tell you their dream. And then maybe you go to God and pray about it. You go to God and talk to God about it, and then God gives you the interpretation of the dream, right? But the funny thing is that this scenario, the person expected you to know what the dream's about. And not only tell them the dream, but also give them an interpretation. That wasn't the regular thing that was that used to happen. And that's why the astrologers and the magicians and the Chaldeans were asking and saying, tell us the dream, then we're going to give you an interpretation. Which I say that's a lot of what people do in their cultic in the occultic society for for the most part you tell them your things and then they use those things against you they don't really know things about you though i know that they can read the spirit dream and all but there's some things about you that these people really don't know you're the one who is giving them that information and then they are actually leveraging on that information you give them and so daniel was due for another promotion and then there was a test he passed that test the first test was for them to not just live that luxurious life, but rather eat vegetables. And they did, they passed the test, they qualified, they went to the next level. They were now due for another promotion and then the dream. They were now due for another promotion and then the part of them serving other gods or bowing to a statue. That's how it is. So child of God, be ready. When you get to a point in your life where you keep getting a lot of challenges and a lot of obstacles or some kind of difficulties, some kind of tests, now and then every now and then know that god is sure that he has built capacity in you enough and it's time for you to get to your next level so he believes that you're qualified for your next level so don't see challenges don't see um all these um difficult situations that are coming your way as a problem rather look at them with a godly attitude and you'll be glad because in that way you will know that Every time you get a test, it means God is telling you that you're up for a promotion. And who doesn't like promotions? I don't know about you, but I love promotions. I love to be promoted. I love to go to the next level. And so the next time you have a challenge, just know you're due for a promotion. And don't get to grumble about it or murmur about it or be bitter about it. 
rather be focused so that you can get to be able to pass the test and then you will win. Right, people? The Lord just put that in my heart to drop it there. Whenever you are due for a promotion, you're going to get a test. And when you pass your test, you're going to go to the next level. That's how we roll. So guys, let's get started. We'll definitely go on with a word of prayer. And then we'll do the birthday party. We celebrate people's birthdays and all. And then we we'll go ahead and do the audio Bible. We we'll pray for the birthday people. Then we'll do the audio Bible and then we'll do the Bible study. So in a chapter a day, aka a card for sure, we do all these really amazing things. And I'm sure that while you're a part of it today, you're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. And you will get to be a part of it every other time that you have the chance to. We are glad, duly glad to have you. Welcome, Rodel Rupa. Welcome, Astrid. Welcome, Onia. Welcome, Joyce Contis. Welcome, Mei Chan. Welcome, Riza. And who else is here? Um, those are the people that we have for now, or those are the people that I can see their names for now. Don't get mad at me if I don't see your name. The internet is acting up, okay? So, yes, guys, let's go. Let's hand over the session to God. After we get to do that, we are going to study the Word of God. We're going to do the birthday parties, and then we'll study the Word of God together. Like I said, today our Bible party is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 4, and it has... 37 verses. So let's keep going. Okay. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made rejoice and glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, there is none like you in all the earth. You are the great and the mighty king. You are the awesome ruler. You are the gentle redeemer. There is none like unto thee, O God. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are the mighty man in battle. There is none who can be compared unto you, O Lord God. All other idols before, all other gods before you are idols. Father, we've come before your turn of grace today. Speak to us in a special way. You know our hearts. You know what we need. You know our desires. You know our expectations. Let these expectations not be cut short in Jesus' name. You said in your word that the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Father, we're holding on to it and believing you that whatever you say is true, whatever you say stands. So, Lord, we pray today, let your word transform. Let it heal. Let it deliver. Let it bring answers. Let it bring divine speed, divine acceleration. And all the things that your people are here desiring and needing, oh God, to be the best version that you've created them to be, oh Father. Lord, today, speak to us. Any single person who has been preordained or predestined to be a part of a chapter a day today, oh Lord, they're going to be here. No one is going to miss it for nothing. If it's time, you're going to create a way that they'll get enough time to be here. If it's Lord, internet data, you're going to provide for them. If it's financial, whatever it is that it would take for them to be a part of a chapter a day and receive that which you prepared in store for them here, Lord, they're going to get it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Because we know that you always hear and answer. Take all the glory, but now forevermore, because you deserve it. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. So, guys, it's time for the birthday party. Let's get this started. Hi, Ronel. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Let's go. It's birthday party time. Let's find out those who are in the birthday book. The first person is Mom Gloria Binwi. Mom Gloria Binwi, I got to know her when I was in Bamenda. I was working at a Christian gospel radio at that time. And then she had a program. And so she decided to come to the radio because I used to have this thing of, oh, I really want to see my listeners. I really want to see those people that, um, I really want to see those people that I always hear their voices. They call me, they send messages, they make requests on the program. My program was a very, uh, a very interesting calling program. So people could call and make wishes and celebrate people and all those kinds of things. So, um, she was actually listening to the program and then she decided to come to the radio to come and visit and we became super duper good friends. She's an amazing lady, a great mother, a great friend, a great business lady, a great wife as well. And it has been awesome since I got to know her. Um, she does these crochet things and she really does unique ones. I got some for myself and I'm hoping to still get some eventually, even though mine has not yet reached me. But I'm grateful that 
She always does the best she can to give me the best of everything that I ask for. When I see her put up those crochet things, it's like I should just buy every each and every one of them because they're so unique and so beautiful. She does a really great job patronize her business. Um, crochet BI. I'm not sure how to think, but I know it's crochet. Um, it's a purple logo, white and purple kind of. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So you can follow her on social media and you get to patronize her. She can also put a link in the comment section when she gets to see this. Hi, Jama dears. Hi, Evangelist Mary Favor. Thank you for coming. The next person is Mom Anna Vanessa. We went to the same secondary school together. She's a very lovely person, a very jovial person as well. I'm glad to know her. We were in the same class. I think, yeah, we're in the same class when we're in secondary school. And then I think high school, we all separated. I went to a different place. I don't know if she stayed back or she remained. But then we kind of lost contact, reconnected again on social media, and then fully reconnected again on our accident association group. She's a very nice lady, very friendly, and very jovial too. You all know this thing about bright, broad smile and laughter is a secret thing. God gave it to us free. <laughs> The next person is Mam Namundo Akale. We call her P-Nams. And of course, she's also one very lovely person, very kind. I used to admire her height so much. She was so tall and so cute. Oh my God. Like, you know, it's really, really amazing how you guys, you all are in a class and then you're looking at someone and the person is like, tall, tall. And then you're short, short and just so minuscule. <laughs> yeah. And p -Nams, she used to always look out for everybody like she used to be the one that wants to make sure that everybody's fine and happy and all that she's into pastry and um yeah i think pastries and a lot others i don't know the others i can't remember very much but i know that she's into pastry she does a lot of nice pastry so if you need someone to do your pastries for your events then pnams is the person you should be calling out to that's also another secret and then the next person is mom lauren gabatizo Mam Lauren Gabatizo, I got to connect with her through Mam Amy Bander. So is this group of um, amazing women who get to do a lot so far. And then I connected with one. And then that particular one connected me to a lot of them. And we became really good friends. Mam Tizo Gaba is a woman who is just sold out for the word, sold out for the things of God. I mean, she loves God with a passionate passion. And she also goes all out to teach um through her channel, she has social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and all those other places. She teaches, even on WhatsApp, um, she sends a devotional. I think it's a devotional daily or just some messages that can spur you to think, to meditate on the word of God and all like that. She's also an author. She has written a lot of great books. Please follow her and get her books and thank me later. There's this one that really, really got to me. The title is Inside Out. Yes, just like my evangelist, Mary Favor is also an author. Every, each and every one of them have a particular book that has gotten to me. Hers was Russia, um, Don't Play Russian Roulette with God or No More Russian Roulette with God. I'm not sure, but I know that for sure there's something about Russian Roulette in the title of that book. And this one about uh, Mamti Zogaba is Inside Out. Find that book and read it and you'll thank me later. So thank you so much. All these amazing people. She's also an amazing mother. She's like my size. Hey, Auntie Laura, my size. Meh. Like if you see her, you're not going to believe that she has five or is it four kids? She has five. I think five. She's smallish like me. When I mean like physically smallish like me. Yeah. And she says she has five kids. I'm like, huh? Are you for real? Yes, yeah, she's for real. There are people who have those kinds of statues like that, and God gives them like that for a reason. And yes, she's really, really an amazing, great woman, inside out, good at heart, good at mind, good at even her intentions and all those things that she gets to do. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. So let's go once more. Happy birthday, Gloria Binwi. Happy birthday, Mam Eno Vanessa. Happy birthday, Mam Namundo Akale. Happy birthday, Mam Laura Ngaba Tinzo. And yes, that's it for the birthday people today. <laughs> that's it for the birthday people today. We're getting right on to go with 
our Bible party. Like I said, our Bible party is taken from the book of Daniel chapter 4, and he has 37 verses. But before we get there, we need to pray for the birthday people. Why not just pray for the names of these people that I've just called right now? Nana, we're praying for these people and every other person who is born today. So if you know someone who is born today, or you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who is born today, Please, you can forward this video to them so that they can listen and get blessed. They can listen and claim the prayers and their lives will turn around for the better. You know the drill, right? So let's get ready. Okay, guys, it's prayer time. Let's go. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who are born today, O oh Lord. We thank you for adding a new year to their lives. We thank you for writing beautiful pages, beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as you open it today. Father, we pray that you cause them to be trailblazers, persons, face setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, O oh God, and bring before you, O oh God, every activity that we have to do today. Lord, we bring them over to you, O oh God. Father, that is going to be you and you alone that will be the center and the focus of whatever we do here today. Let me fizzle out totally and completely so that you increase. Father, we pray, oh God, that as these people continuously live their lives, oh God, you're going to bless them with the choices of your blessings and rebuke every devourer from their lives, oh God. Father, that they will increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. That no weapon forms of fashion against them shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that even as the blessing and compass them as a sheer round about, no weapon formed of fashion against them shall prosper. And Lord, those who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings that are coming up from the overflowing blessings from their lives. There will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. They will do exploits for the kingdom, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, jubilation, and celebration. And if you try to come, they'll be here same time next year. Testifying of all the awesome such things that you do in their lives this year and beyond. Father, we say thank you. Lord, open their eyes to see those they're supposed to be destined to pursue. So they'll strategically position themselves to help these people. And also strategically position their destiny to us as well. So when they also cry out for help, help will be made available to them instantly. Lord, we appreciate you. We're grateful. We say thank you for all these people. Divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best. And divinely uh, disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to regress or stagnate. Lord, let this be an awesome season, oh God, for all your children all over the world. And even these ones who were born today, oh Lord, Father, I pray that you're going to make it spectacular for them. All for your glory. Lord, let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we we'll give you all the praise. We we'll give you all the glory. We we'll give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself. Thank you, O Lord, for adding a new year to the lives of all these people. Lord, even as they're fulfilling purpose and getting on with their lives, they might get to a place where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like they want to give up. They want to back out. But they'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way it walk down in it. They won't stray. They won't drill. They'll stay on course. And after it all, all glory be given unto your holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father, because we know you're a prayer answering God. And Lord, give them reasons to jubilate, celebrate, and thank God. All for all the amazing things that you've done in their life, you're doing and you're still to do. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. Thank you, ancients of days. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, we do not take for granted all that you do for us, in us, with us, and around us. Thank you for all these amazing people. We are forever grateful. Lord, we still have a prayer request for the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you because we know you're always here and answer us. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. And favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Ginomus, Amen, Amen, and Amen. I love to sing the Amen. So let's go. Amen. Amen, 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 
Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their life. Amen. I feel afraid. Amen. Let it be in the last two prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In the last as we pray. God bless you all tremendously. I may feel your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast and do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime. Mais je vous aime. Plus, plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire vous tous. Kisses to you and happy birthday to you once again. It's time for us to get the Bible party started. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Let's fix this up and get this Bible party started. Let's fix this up. Get this Bible party started. Okay, guys. I'm ready. I'm good to go. Are you ready? Welcome, radio. Welcome, star slash deck. Agency, welcome Mr. Jamadius, welcome Evangelist Mary Favor. Thank you all for being here today. So let's get this Bible party started. I hope that you all can hear me loud and clearly. We started from the beginning. I'm not sure if it was loud and clear, but we had to go back again just in case. So we don't miss out on anything. So we had to redo the start, but I'm sure right now, is good and we're good to go. So let's go. Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to shew the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told them the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at least, but at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And before him I told a dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magician, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in thee, and no secret trouble at thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Those were the visions of my head, of my head in my bed. First were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the side thereof to the ends of the earth. Sorry, that sleep people. Thoris were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto the heaven, and the side thereof to the earth of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it. And the fowls of the heavens dwelled in the boughs thereof, 
and all the flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. He cried aloud and said, Thoris. He cried aloud and said, Thoris, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the grass and of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruled in the kingdom of men and give it it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the best the basis of men this dream i king nebuchadnezzar had seen now though now thou o belteshazzar declare the interpretation thereof for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation but thou art able for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meant for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reached unto heaven. And thy dominion to the earth of the to the end of the earth. It is thou, O king, that thou it is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reached unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stem of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be with the beasts, with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree root, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquity by shewing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All these came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar 
at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the words, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and its kingdom is from generation to generation and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou at the same time my reason returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom mine honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abate. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. Hey, this bastard can provoke, but he's too little. We'll read this again at the end, people. Because there have been some distractions in the middle. So, worry not, people. We're going to do this together. We're going to keep doing this, okay? Yep, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this. Yes, Lord, we'll keep doing this. So, what did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Someone is due for another promotion or someone is due for a demotion. Oh my, oh my. That's very risky. That's very dangerous because when you get to write your test, you might either remain in the same class or you might be sent to the next class. In this case, someone was due for a demotion and when he was even told what was going to happen, he actually did the opposite and he got him into serious trouble. So let's start from the beginning and find out what was going on so that we can liken it to ourselves and we can prepare ourselves very well so that there are things that we're going to avoid like a plague so we don't get in trouble and then there are things that we're going to put our hearts to so that we don't miss out on God's best for our lives, okay? So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, people. Let's go. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. And so, this is what happens. Child of God, child of the Most High. You have to be very careful. There are tendencies and situations and scenarios where God can do a lot for you or through you or with you, and it gets to your head. 
There are lots of times God can use it to help a lot of people, to do a lot of nice things and a lot of amazing things to a lot of people. And if you don't put your life, your heart in check, you will miss it. You will miss it. It's God who has given Nebuchadnezzar all these wings and all these heights that he was putting him and making him the best king that should be and all that. It was God that was making him get all of that. But it looked like it had gotten to a point and it was getting into his head. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the torch upon my bed and the visions of my bed troubled me. Therefore, I made a decree to bring it to all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. And the magicians couldn't do it. When God is ready to favor you or to upgrade you or to do great things with you, he makes whatever has to be revealed by you impossible for anyone to know you know sometimes these astrologers they have a way that they would actually do some things and they can get some little information some little details here and there and there and then they'll be telling you some things it looks like they're connecting the dots and then getting it right somehow it looks like it's a little bit right to an extent you know like that so this one is like they knew nothing they were clueless so the, the king remembered that some time ago, there was an interpreter. This time around, he did it the regular way. So the way the dream is scary, the way the dream is fighting, is frightening. I'm not going to wait for you to go and wait and pray and let God show you the dream. Yeah, I'm telling you the dream, life and direct. Then you are just going to go ahead and interpret the dream. I can know your true interpreter next to you and all of that. So instead of making that to be a long process, let me rather just give you the dream. I will just give you the dream, and then all you need to do is interpret the dream. So he goes ahead and tells what the dream was all about, and then they said this time around. So let me, let me, let me say something here that has to do with timing. Sometimes, like the last time for the other dream, this guy had to ask for a couple of days or a time. He had to ask for a time frame, you know, um, Daniel asked for a time frame and said he wanted to go and talk to God and then he'll come back and give the king a sure answer. This time around, imagine that if he was doing as he was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be war without end. And then he has to now say that, oh, he wants to go and, uh, um, and pray again. No. God was ready to give him an answer there and then. God has different strategies and different techniques of doing things so we have to be as flexible as god is at some point he will give you immediately at some point he'll make you wait maybe for a day or two maybe for years so you have to be sure of what god is saying to you per time you have to be sure of the timing you have to know whether this is what god wants you to do now or not you have to be sure you get it you have to be sure because sometimes some people, they don't even know God's timing. And so when they're just closest to their breakthrough, that's when they give up. When they're closest to when God wants to do that thing that he promised to do in their lives, they give up. And that's it. It's just done and dusted. It's a sad scenario. We've seen people lose things that God has prepared for them. God has packaged for them over and over. We've seen that happen over and over and over again. And it's just so sad. It's just so, so sad. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome, woman yeah. of God and fire. We're glad to have you. Wow, good afternoon. Like the network game wanted me to come on, and I was like, I just spoke to her a moment ago, like an hour. Oh, so I know. Happening. I know. All is well. Sorry, today. Uh, I'm fine. I was just appreciating about uh, writing, appreciating your comment on how God, if you know God is God, so we cannot put him in a checkbox. We cannot say because he yeah. behaved today, he will behave the same way tomorrow. Even with you, he changed oh, yeah. it with me. Every day, changing it minute by minute. So, 
I'm just happy that we are beginning to see the more we study his word, the more we realize that oh, yeah. he is really um, someone to be sought after daily. You can oh, yeah. say, ah, I read the Bible from cover in 2020. <laughs> that's enough forever and ever. Amen. No. I know. Continue. God keeps giving revelations every single day. Sometimes you open a particular chapter, you open a particular verse, and it's like, you know this verse, like, it looks like you know it back to back. You know it, like, to your fingertips. And then you're, God is saying something through it, and you're like, what? Where was this all the while? Like, where has this been? And that's why you keep have, you have to keep studying the word of God. You can't get tired. You can't get you can't get enough of it. You really just can't. You can't. Because every single time, God gives a revelation. And he gives a revelation for a season and for time. And like we said, we always do these things because we want to be able to leave the word of God. And so when we're looking at these things, we can see what the word of God is doing and how the word of God is telling us that you cannot, you can, you cannot box him in. You cannot. Today he can do it this way and tomorrow he'll do it the other way. Even when he was here on earth, we saw him many times. He healed many blind people in many different ways. They were all blind people. He healed a lot of lame people in many different ways. So we could not go and start holding him now or putting one as a particular standard. So no, if you want to heal a blind person, you have to spit on mud and then rub it on the person's eyes. Abba. If you want to heal a lame man, you have to tell them, rise up and walk. If you want to heal a lame man, you have to put your hands on your... You, no, no. As at the time that God is giving you the instruction, that's exactly what you're doing. And that's also why sensitivity is important. You need to be sensitive. You need to be able to know that this is God telling me to do this thing. If not, you're going to miss whatever God wants you to do. you miss it. You won't get it. So you also have to be sensitive to be able to know that this is what God is saying per time. And they said here that after the king told him, so the first time the king did it and said, you want um, pray and come and tell me. The king has now had some, some level of trust or confidence in the guy knowing that, yes, it's true. God really speaks to him because he brought everything. So this time around, why waste that time? Probably in the king's mind, he's thinking like, the last time he had to waste up to one day because he had to go and pray so that he would be able to find out what the dream was before giving me interpretation. So today, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I want my interpretation. Na 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 na. Yeah here and there. I'm telling you what the dream is about. Bring me interpretation only. Now only interpretation we want. You don't need one day. Forget. In 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 people's mind, that's how these things work. Oh. In people's mind, when they see you do something a particular way the first time, they know that that second time is the way you're supposed to do it. And then when you're not doing it that way, now it's annoying them. It's just like um, how they call that man, Naaman. He has been hearing how the prophet will lay hands on people and pray for people and speak to people and stuff. He won't thank a whole big man. <laughs> the thing that's going to go into his heart or two at a time. Go into his heart or two at a time. Not even for swimming pool. They probably have, if they had swimming pool those days, though, I don't know. But just imagine. Like what kind of rich man he has to be pulling in his house and everything and everything. Then they tell you to go and sleep his hand, don't go at that. Enter and come out seven times. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Oh God, prophet. What's it happen? Man of God, what are you doing? I've been hearing you laying hands on people. You have been praying for people. You've just been decreeing things and things. Like, no, this is the way that God wants to deal with you. Oh God, man. It's your obedience. Yes, that is the most important thing in all of this. It's not about the water. It's not about the situation. God could still just stand there and kill you after you say, but it is obedience. Were you able to humble yourself enough and do the foolishness that you are being assigned to go and do? Hey, child of God, it is well the righteous. So today, Oga King says, eh, I want my interpretation. Nah, 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 nah. And I'm not sending you to go and look for the dream. Oh. Me, I'm telling you the dream. Clear, clear. I'll give you every details today. I beg you. Bring me that interpretation. And in one hour's time, God gave Daniel the interpretation. Child of God, your own matter can take one hour. Some persons will take one year. Some persons will take two weeks. Know your timings with God. It's not man. It's God. If God 
God would have chosen not to give him that interpretation that he will not give him. And the king will do nothing. If God would have chosen that he would take another one day or more than one day to get that interpretation, and the, the king would do him nothing. The king could not force out the interpretation from him. After all, he was not the one giving the interpretation. It was God that was giving the interpretation through him. But now, sometimes, because of fear and all these things, some children of God or some men of God will start giving interpretations that God didn't give them. Because probably they're afraid of the king. The last time the king was threatening that he was going to kill everybody. This time we don't know what he has threatened already because he has already finished with the astrologers and they could not do nothing. This time around they were claiming that last time they needed the, inter they needed the dream. This time they gave them even the dream. They couldn't do nothing. See, when you are due for a promotion, no man will take your position except say you, you willingly give up over the position. No, nobody. Last time they would have said that, oh, it was unfair because they didn't give them the dream. This time around, they gave them the dream. Did they do anything? Nothing. When it is not your own, it's not your own. When it's your own, God will give it to you. It was Daniel's time. He was due for another promotion. Even though for the promotion will come, he will see smoke. <laughs> it is well with the righteous. Ah! When you are due for a promotion, challenges will come, child of God. Get that and believe it. Believe it. When you are due for a promotion, you go, you go write exam. You go write exam. So some of these challenges and difficulties that are coming to you, they are not coming to kill you. They are coming to promote you. They are coming to take you to your next level. God has built capacity in you enough and he knows that you're ready. You're ready for your next level. So he wants to release you. And the only way he will release you is that you write your test, pass your test, and go to your next level. If you keep failing the test, my brother, my sister, daddy, mommy, you go stay for that level, you go remain for that level. And may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. May that just not be your portion. And he says, um, Nebuchadnezzar said, this is a dream. Oh, he was still giving, at verse 19, he was still giving Daniel the dream. So, something that caught my attention when Daniel was, for the one hour, he was thinking. So, it, it looks like God didn't just give him, but at the end of the time, he finished thinking. Maybe as the, the, the king was speaking, God was giving him the interpretation. But the weight of the interpretation for that dream eh, it takes Daniel one hour for calculate how he eh, go coin him. <laughs> hey, God. Tell me about God giving you messages for people that are on hierarchy, for people that are on high positions, oh. for people that are older than you. For people, hey, tell me about it. <laughs> Sometimes, eh, like, we'll pray that prayer say, Lord, show them by themselves. No, these people are big people. They know you. They said you just show them already. Papa God said, now you go give that message. I don't give you message. Carry message, Kuku go give to the person. Hey, you said you go for example. <laughs> ah, Daniel took one hour to call. They had to call him out of himself. Like the king had to call him. Ah. Oh God, Daniel, we're well, waiting for interpretation. What did happen? <laughs> Daniel is thinking, God, how am I supposed to not tell this man that he has to go and live in the forest? <laughs> <laughs> now you used me. Just how many months ago? How many weeks ago? You tell me, said man will be the greatest king ever. Like his, his his reign is going to be flourishing and everything, and all of a sudden now you can't tell me that they go only for bush. We animal them. Papa, go back. Think now, which mouth now tell you this one? <laughs> See, child of God, we have to get to a place where uh, we are ready to die if it means we die for God. We are ready that it doesn't matter what the world is going to do to us but if it's going to please god for me to say this thing i would say it without reservation i would say it as to you see wireless clap 
there's something me and my sister will call wireless slap eh when god give wireless slap you go no to no say next time you know go make mistake when you taste go left you just go left <laughs> hey jesus christ of nazareth see eh as much as god is love he's just you understand we have to get that right and we have to get it straight because sometimes people feel like oh because god is love it means that his justice is going to just wave it he will not wave it his love he's just so when the time recommends that he should do justice he will do justice when the time is for love he will pamper he will pamper so you don't think that oh because you are David, a man after God's heart, you now commit adultery and then commit murder, and God will not deal with you. He goes show you pepper. He loves you. You have apologized, you have repented, but you see, you go face up, you will face the consequences. So, yes, as much as God is just, He's His love, He's just too. Daniel gather courage from wherever. We thank God that he gathered the courage anyhow, anyhow. <laughs> he had to speak up. Eh? Everybody was waiting for him. Oh. He had to speak up. Hmm. It, it's even better than the fact that if God didn't even give him the interpretation, what would he have even done? Hmm. That they've even given you the interpretation. Now the fear of waiting you get for receive now, so they <laughs> owe you from speaking up. They imagine that God chose not to even give you the interpretation. I said, like, nah, it's not now. Nah. I don't want to talk now, nah, Beck. You all should go home. come back like in two days or seven days. <laughs> hey, and you people think that they're sacrificed, that we're making too many sacrifices as Christians. Do you know how they tell some people to go and wait for seven market days when they go for occultic transformations or occultic whatever? Go and wait until the seven market day. Go and <laughs> The tension that is in your body without waiting season, eh? Anything can do you at that time. So he actually got courage. And he decided to tell the king what was supposed to happen. Like I said from the beginning, God had really, really said great things about Nebuchadnezzar. And he was going to use him. He was going to bless him. He was going to make his kingdom flourish and all of that. But at some point, Nebuchadnezzar got it in his head. He got it in his head. And he was feeling like it was God. Would listen and would hear what he said at the bottom to see how that thing started becoming effective. Meanwhile, after Daniel said what he said, he said that maybe if you even go back to God, you stop that iniquity, you stop that unrighteousness and stuff, and go back to God, maybe he would think he will have a rethink and say, okay, no, I know sanction the man again. He has listened to what I've said and he has seen how serious it is. And he's not going to do it anymore. Mm -mm. He don't ask that question. That, that kind of, uh, look me fine, Daniel. We all did my hard work. What, are you, what, what rubbish are you spewing? I'm sure mm -hmm. in his mind, he could have been like, hey, this small village boy, slave, I don't prop you, prop you, wash you, come on, you forgot, I can't put you for my corner. Now you talk rubbish, eh? <laughs> downplaying yeah he was saying that the the the, the, the what is the power of the gods not when they came out from fire he said the god it's like like this man just knows the way to use his words this nebuchadnezzar he didn't say the plane and play with fire you know understand at one point in time he will revere god as god though and then another point in time, he'll be sounding like some of those that are small, small, picking, picking God there. He says, because the spirit of the gods have given you the power to interpret dreams. Can you imagine? Gods. Like, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Now, wow. But that's how some of us we are, even though. God will give you something. You'll be in the church 247, praying, asking God, asking God. And then, boom, as God gives you, now my hard work, oh, I be go, I be walk, I be do that interview, I be study so there's no sleep set for night. Yes, woman, I'm going go on. Yeah, I wanted to say that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Nebuchadnezzar who has already forgotten, you know, like Saul so, forgot that he was picked up when he was looking for donkeys. He had forgotten that part, you, you know. 
No, I forgot him. That, that's where they saw him on his way looking for donkeys until he was frustrated. He forgot. He was now a whole king Saul. So Nebuchadnezzar has forgotten that there was a time when he even lay down and worshipped the God of Shajan, Meshach, and Abed. I said, let me not hear any minimizing and saying, I see that the spirit of the gods. I saw small things and I was like, wow, Nebuchadnezzar. Uncle Nebo, now wow! Yesterday, 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 I'm not talking about yesterday as in it's a transition of one day or something. This is probably a time, a season. It was a season that all these things were happening. It's not like yesterday, this one just happened, then the next day, the other one happened. No, it was like a season and it was happening to show that he had actually gotten those territories that God had promised at the first dream. He had gotten it and then he had grown now. That's why he was now puffed up and then saying that I got this one, I did this. <laughs> and, and when Daniel gave him that interpretation, and I don't know if I read in my own version, there may be, but I know that Daniel told him that if he turns around, if he turns away from his iniquity and this and that, you know. And it took like one year after that time. That means that God gives us time. He not gives us time. But he gives us time also. Wow. He's not even only giving time. He sends you the warning. He tells you the punishment. I put before you life and that you life. Thank God. He's, he has given you question. He don't give you answer. He don't give you exam. He don't give you answer for the exam. You only have to choose that answer. We don't give you. Choose different things. I saw before you life and death, choose life. I mean, like, I've told this man, and God started with a good thing, oh. He still started and praised him there that his, 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 uh, um, his reign is going to really be beautiful and all that. But now, there's going to be a time because he has still gone back to be minimizing God. God will absolutely be himself for him. Until he says he will come back. So from what I read in my Bible, it means that he says this left him. He said, I said, when they have one use you, eh? even your common sense, you lose even the common, the commonness of the common senselessness. You lose it all. This man said, everybody's serving the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then he wakes up and starts acting like a God. I said, when the devil wants to destroy you, well, hey, and then, then you see this merciful God, he's still hoping, he, he still gave him an option that even if he doesn't repent before going to the forest, after he goes to the forest, he's sure that when he don't feel the pain, he will repent, come back. That's why the storm was remaining. The storm was going to remain. They were not going to uproot it. If they uprooted it, that's the end of the matter. It cannot grow again. But you see, as long as that storm is there, whether they cut the tree and cut it by how to how, as long as it has roots in the ground that is carrying water and setting into that storm, it will grow again. It, it will grow again. So God has already even seen past the fact that he might not even repent even after he has been warned, he will still go to the forest. So God made provision for if he repents and for if he doesn't repent before he goes to the forest. If he, what God do you want to serve? What do you want? This is the God we serve. He, he makes provision for the fact that you can accept what he's telling you immediately. And for the fact that you might not. And the fact that that's the one who knows the end from the beginning. He makes provision every step of the way. And we still complain. We still grumble. We still murmur. What do we want me God do? No, honestly. What do we want God to now do? Because it's crazy. It's sad how this thing happened. Like, they told this man, all this thing is going to happen to you because you've forgotten the God that saved you and saved your nation and gave you all these territories you've gotten. 
So he wants your senses to come back. You need to know that he's the one who gave you. He's the one who is ruling. It's not you. He's the one who is giving you power to rule. It's not you. It's not by your strength. Can I say something? Yes, sir. Go ahead. There's this word that comes to my mind, and I think it's the word pride. Mm -hmm. That is that is the word. That's Let's the word. not I cannot sugarcoat it otherwise. And 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 uh, it is that pride that makes you now start thinking that well, it's my ability, it's my capacity. Anyway, it's my personal development, it's my motivation, oh, yeah. it's my dedication, it's my you know, all those things that are out there. You got to brought me to a level where he told me, I don't want you to be a motivational speaker anymore. Take that page down. I took that page down. I'm not my motivational speaker. God said, look, it's no longer about what you, you can do by your own. It's about what I can do. And if that's not the message you're taking out there anymore, you better shut up. So I, I, I have stopped. There's a point where you can get, but at a certain level, you realize that uh, motivate yourself the way you want, but you'll get to a level where you cannot. So the oh, best yeah. thing you humble but you know because we human beings we like to own things we like to we want the clap we want the accolade we want the recognition we do a lot of things because we want that so people might say it makes me happy yes even in that making you happy why you put it out there including myself is because where other people can see people can be inspired people can be encouraged oh, yeah. well people clap that is the truth about it some have just gone to the extreme end of it oh, yeah. in all of it actually push god out of it Forgetting that it is that God who started with also. It is that God who is elevating gradually, gradually. Because when they say, let your light so shine, who is helping that light to shine in you? Can I make my light shine? Me who? You have to. So actually, it is that is shining, right? But at some point, it will shine so bright. Instead of me allowing people to see and give glory to God, no, 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 give me the glory. It is me. I will biggest dress and mother see me see me see me see me forgot about god see me me who nebuchadnezzar i know nebuchadnezzar see let's continue me myself and i nebuchadnezzar like was so full of himself like and you know to be told just like i'm getting now in my heart a lot of people come in here and hear what they want to hear minister Mark is saying her personal experience as we go on your own could be something else. It could be something entirely different. It could be even something that she is doing, and God is letting her go. But this particular one, God don't stand that say no do her. And that's where that thing that I keep saying all the time that the Holy Spirit told me once, and it stuck with me that a uh, princess, you meet in Muse Kume Kwene, eh? You will do the God thing, not the good thing. Someone say, Are you serious? I tell him serious because there are some good things that are not God. And when you're insisting to do those good things that are not God, it's show up, it's yourself, it's flesh, it's pride. Yeah, you want to do it because people will see, you want to do it because people will know. But the ones that God wants you to do, you don't want to do them because nobody's seeing it. You don't want to do them because nobody's seeing it. So you're not going to get any accolades, you're not going to get any praises. Too many people, you calm them. They don't want to be in the intercessory ministry because it is nothing. Nobody sees intercessors in church. Too That's true. Many people <laughs> to be in the choir. It's not just because the choir is the only place we can minister or we can we can we can, we can serve God in. Because it's a it's a spotlight ministry. Not all my ministry go there spotlight. Leave my ministry alone. Leave me. Leave my ministry alone. Yeah. I don't mind if I was. <laughs> a background minister. Some people, their ministry is background. Some people, their ministry is spotlights. You will be in the spotlight. Some people, you will be in the background. And we have to start getting used to it. Because some people who quote any kind of scripture to want to do what they want to do. Hey, the Bible says that, that uh, 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 a city built on a hill cannot be hidden. A B. So you want everybody to know who you are. That's why you want to be doing things. That's why you want to be shouting, singing everywhere. What your calling is, Abi? Don't worry. You are Uncle Nebo. When you have gone into the bush or the forest, and you're going to enjoy it, how to live with animals and grass and all those things, it will humble you. Then you will know that God is the one who reigns in the affairs of men. Don't be your power. Don't be your saint. 
Because that time people be asking, we all the assets, Nebuchadnezzar, you like king. You two from those staying in our forest. Then you go no, you no be sense. You go no, no. say no be that authority that you think you have in that office, or that authority that you think you have in that environment, or that authority you think you have in that ministry. You know that it is God that is ruling in the affairs of men. Your affairs included. It's not. It's not you. So don't even try it. Don't don't even dare that kind of thing again. May good Lord help us in Jesus' name. God brought you to a place. You so soon for God. And that's why sometimes I'm like, yes, God had the right to tell the, 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 the apostle, the disciple, and say, mm -mm. I need to move the corn for your flesh. It will put you in check, boy. It will remain there. But you know what happens? My grace is sufficient. You go feed and do lamb. So that every point in time that that rear head, that stupid thing of pride wants to show up, eh? That turn in the flesh will treat you tomorrow. So poop, you will not say, come back. Pipe down, pipe down, pipe down, young man. Pipe down. So there are some things in your life that will so put you in check. You will know that it's not about you. It's not you. If God is you. <laughs> You will be giving. <laughs> you will. You will break down because you will understand that it is God. It's not you. Some of us, God will help us. We have, like I said, some people being in church 247. As soon as God gives them what they're praying for, bam. It's like they don't know God again. Oh, that my child there. Eh? It's my child though. Hey, I have to do this, this, this for my child. Wait, dear. A child, you were serving God like like there was no tomorrow. All of a sudden, the gift has taken the place of your service to God, of your work for God. You were single, you were serving God like there's no tomorrow. Now you are married, you don't even serve God at all. I'm not saying that you have to serve God with the same capacity because even God has told us in the Bible. That we should serve him while we are young because when we are old, there are some things we will not be able to do. It's the reality. It's the reality. When you're older, maybe you're married, you have to share your time between yourself, your husband, you have children. You have to share two between children. In law, sometimes they'll come there. It's not your, it's not by choice. It is it, it's by choice, yes. But they you there's nothing you can do. They're your in-laws, you not drive them away. You have to also create time for them. You have to create time for all these people in your life. You think that you'll be able to do all of those things if you had not done some small, small banking prayers that you banked while you were younger. Like you see, people, the smoke you see, nobody be here, go hot. Yes. Because these people didn't come, the enemy didn't come to play. You think you're happy that you're progressing and going and doing the things that God wants you to do. No, he's not happy about it. He's not excited. So don't think he's going to be applauding you or putting you red carpet to walk upon it. He'll be finding ways to deal with you. And amongst all these people, you can use anybody. You can use anybody. Ha. So we should not come and receive gifts from the giver and then disconnect from the giver. Ha. That's a dangerous thing to do. We should not receive things from the one who gave us those things. And then at the end, we stop seeing him. We start seeing ourselves. That's what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. And ah, God Papa, wants him. God wants him. God wants us. Even the children of Israel, every single time, God sends somebody to speak to them. He was not just getting up in the morning, one beautiful morning, and he just feels like, oh, today I'm not punishing him and says more. Who does that? Even you, a regular parent, is that what you do? You just wake up one beautiful morning from your bed and you feel like punishing this children. Probably just punish them. Who does that? Nobody. Now the beginning of provoke, you should almost enter and say, I, before you are sanctioning them and dealing with them. And some of them, you want them over and over. This guy too, you don't do it again. Don't do it again. And then they'll go and come and do it again. They'll go and come and do it again. Ah, now, now, God will warn you and warn you and warn you before you 
eventually sanction you. And sometimes, like the children of Nineveh, when the warning comes, you repent. You are free. You. Punishment cancel. Punishment cancel. And that's some people like Jonathan don't want you not to be punished. They want you to receive your due punishment. But God says, you see this one? After warning, it's my mercy that speaks for the ones that change, for the ones that repent. It's not my justice that will speak. It's my mercy that will speak on their behalf. And so they are justified by the work that I've done for them. It's, it's tricky and dicey for you. You know the relationship you have with God. So you have to be working on it. You have to be examining. The apostles say, examine yourself daily to see yes. whether you are still in the faith. Uh, uh. You can step out of the faith. You can. He will not be telling you to watch out. He will not be telling you to check every single time. If it's not possible, nobody, nobody is yeah. exempt from their salvation with fear and trembling. Nobody. Be you, then be you, prophet, apostle, archbishop, all of that. Nobody. So if we are speaking ourselves here on our own, no, we think our minimizing God. We are not minimizing Him because uh, we're just being humble. How our level? If we're just helping him, just know that we are yeah, yeah, that's all. Oh, Minimizing him. Oh. Like, you have to check yourself, examine yourself daily. You have to watch out, though. It's not a joking matter like this. It's not a joking matter. So, this one for all king. Let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break up thy sins by righteousness. This is where they, they are already giving him the thing. And then they told him what he needs to do. They're giving him what he's, to, he's supposed to do. If he doesn't want that to happen, if he doesn't want that particular punishment that, or that particular sanction, he needs to break off his sins by righteousness. And he needs to cut off his iniquity by showing mercy. He has become merciless to the poor people, which was not supposed to be so. So he had to become merciful. There's some of us. That's the same thing we're doing. That's the same thing we're doing. We are so heartless. We don't show mercy to nobody. We treat people anyhow, way that you don't want to be treated. That's how you treat people. And the Lord is telling you that you are living in sin. If you are living in sin, you are a backslider. You will not be Christian. Go and quote me anywhere. I don't give a. I don't bloody care. You see me like this. I'm telling you now, based on Bible, eh? If you are living in sin, you are once giving your life to Christ. You are a backslider. You need to repent. If, if you fall in sin, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. Hear my English fine and use the words I use. I say if you are living in sin, let me find another word. It's sin. It's your daily life. If you are doing sin every day constantly, like a normal thing to you, you are a backslider. You don't fall with that. You need to repent and come back to the faith. Eh? That's your cry that you should cry to God. Eh? But if you're falling, you have made a mistake today, and your conscience is freaking you, you're still a child of God who has just fallen, and you need to rise. <laughs> But that doesn't mean eh, that you should take God's grace for granted. Mostly keep sinning so that grace may abound. No. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the grace. God, help us. Help us. I only want to tell somebody, why are you judging me? We're not judging you. It's Bible. <laughs> like the, the fact that you cannot grow together. You understand? You when you feel some darkness disappears because darkness cannot comprehend it. Do you understand? In getting to this room here, you don't need to say the darkness disappear, disappear. Mm -hmm. You just switch light on. All darkness for both sides is bamus. It is automatic. 
I said, but what we don't want the light of God to shine in some areas in our lives. And we're claiming that we're Christian. You can deceive yourself. Oh. You can deceive us also. But you know you cannot deceive God, Abi. I'm not be my heaven, you go enter. Oh. Now God in heaven, you won't go enter. <laughs> now you're not supposed to deceive. You can deceive me all you care. You can deceive me all you want. But you, you when you're deceiving yourself, you know you're deceiving yourself. And as for God, you know you cannot deceive God. So don't even bother. <laughs> Get away from sin, no. break off from sin. It is our sin that is separating us from the world. It's sin, nothing else. It is sin, it is sin that is separating us from God. So, if you want to be close to God, if you want a relationship with God, break off from sin, child of God, break off from sin. Hey God, have mercy on us. Oh, help us, help us to understand this thing. Let this one sink inside. It's a sin that is separating you from God. Hey, you say, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. So, if you oh, okay. do all these things, okay, that while that is coming, will not come. On. Your time of enjoyment, your time of tranquility, your time of peace, just like you have been enjoying, will continue. Oga said, All this came upon the king of Okanesa. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. <laughs> the king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might of my power come and see pride hey. is it proud come and see pride and for the honor of my majesty do me fine my doctor i don't go get them they talk with you say god god do her which god God be data and not sleep at night. Why the bunker? The God be data if you are the struggle. Now, so the jam a boom there. Read on see which God. See, in this life, we get to understand that the fact that we're even alive eh, is God. Eh, handing over the glory for all other things in our lives will be easy. Because if you are alive, because God gave you breath. And he said, if you live today, there are all other things there. It comes from him still. So I don't understand what we come up with these things of feeling like it's my thing that I did. It's based on my power. It's based on my wisdom. It's based on my strength. It's based on my understanding. It's based on my connection. Eh? Uno no get Godfather. Wala for uno get Godfather. Wala. The only that you are get na Jesus o eh na my ultimate connection that Ned okay hmm. he moved and moved and he, I'm sure he had taken that one whole year and he was pondering about the thing and thinking and looking at how good things were happening and then he's like let him reduce more then maybe they have mentioned this thing may man reduce the things more. I mentioned this treating the poor well. Let me try to treat them a little bit well. So he took like one year to see whether, let me see whether I'll see a difference if I reduce to do these things, you know. I don't do them in big quantities. I can just do in small quantities and see what happens. When you choose to set yourself up for failure, eh, it's exactly what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. For one year, that's how long the rope to pull God gave you. And instead of moving from that middle ground that you are to the side of God, so you come out and you didn't say the pride broker, the devil just came and magnified the pride inside your heart at one beautiful on one beautiful day. And you agree, so they voice her out. <laughs> ah, they say while the word was still in the king's mouth. <laughs> They fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. 
and they shall rise me from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make thee to eat grass and oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most hard ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will it. interesting that even now that i'm seeing this part so before when they even gave him the punishment it was not going to be as serious as this but he was going to suffer some consequences for some things this is the time that god himself now clearly say he will stay with animals eh? because they say, the terms the terms that um, 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 daniel used the terms were too mild. So God wanted to tell him how it's going to happen now. Like this, you will live in the forest of animals. You will eat grass. Hey, when God is for you, you can be against you. When God is against you, you will be for you. You are done. You are done for. But you see how merciful this God is. He will still show mercy. Even in this sanction that he is about to give this guy. And seven times shall pass over thee until that the most high, until thou knowest that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will. And the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon the Bacchanada, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claw hey right. thank you so so much thank you so so much woman of god to say one last thing before i go okay the lesson Kaneza did not want to learn in one year he's going to learn it in seven years and the hard way hey my dear sister that we, will make our choices. we are free to make our choices that's all i'm saying oh yes oh yes and that's the honest truth that's the simple truth in the whole matter you will make your choice as you lay your bed that's how you lie on it as you lay your bed that's how you lie on it thank you so much evangelist favor as you lay your bed that's how you lie on it god has given you a long rope to pull he has given you one year two years three years you don't want to listen this time around you will learn the hard way and in a difficult place that's the same thing that happened to the children of israel he will talk to them they will cry and come back he will talk to them they'll cry and come back and then this time around you have to be 70 years no shaking we will not sorry you. You go cry, we go yeah, we shall not do nothing. You will be there, you will learn the lesson. Because sometimes it looks like when God removes you from that pain easily, you don't learn. So now you go the hard way and you will learn it. It says, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto the heaven and my understanding returned unto me. <clears throat> and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. So you knew all this, all this while in the Bukhanesa. Why? Why would you go through all of that kind of wahala? You were given a long rope to pull. Child of God, why would you go through all that kind of thing that you're going through now? You have been given a long rope to pull, child of God. Do what God is telling you. Do what God is telling you. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he do it according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Nobody can stop God. If God wants to do a thing, he would do it. If he doesn't want to do, you can't force him to do it. So at every point in time, it is God you should be looking to. It's God you should be focusing on. May the good Lord help us in Jesus' name. At the same time, 
my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. God gives grace to the humble. And he humbles the pride, the proud. Are you a proud person? May the good Lord help you that all that he does through you, in you, for you, and with you doesn't get into your head so you don't end up like a Nebuchadnezzar. I pray with all of my heart that you will not be a Nebuchadnezzar. That when God sends a warning maybe you've missed it maybe you've not even understood that you started becoming prideful and then the holy spirit sends someone may we have a teachable spirit enough to listen and learn and change when we are corrected when we are reprimanded when we are shown what god is telling us god showed it to nebuchadnezzar himself in the dream daniel interpreted Daniel's interpretations have always worked. So I don't understand what was going on. But hey, I guess the pride was already there and it had already started growing. So it was hard for him to even realize. He had to go through this kind of shameful, dreadful, and terrible scenario before coming back to his senses. May the devil not use your senses so crazily that you have to suffer some terrible consequences before you come back to your senses in Jesus' name. May that not be your portion. Father, we are grateful for your word today. Lord, we pray that you're going to help us. Give us a teachable spirit that will be able to learn of you, that all we do, live, and say will be you. You will be the center and the focus of all that we do, say, and Lord, all of us will just be you. Father, at any point in time where pride wants to show its rare head in our lives, Lord, give us a hard knock, hard enough to get us back on track in the mighty name of Jesus. Any single time we want to stray just a little, a tiny wincy bitsy, Lord, give us a hard knock to get back on track in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, this and more I pray for each and every one of us and your children all over the world. Lord, we are going to serve you right. We're not going to frustrate the grace of God. We're going to be teachable. We're going to learn of you. We're going to do you now and always. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates. Each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Clitum, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> and it was your favorite program, a chapter a day, aka a card for short, where we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And then we study the King James Version audio Bible together, like we did just right now. And then we create an audio Bible as well that you can listen and grow your faith. Thank you all so much for being here today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I do not take it for granted. Thanks, thanks, thanks again. May the good Lord bless you all tremendously and in a very, very special way. So like I said, at the end of this, we said we're going to read the Bible again because we had a whole lot of distractions and a whole lot of things happening while we're reading and creating the audio bible from the start as much as there's still music playing all around it's better than when we have people talking around us here and laughing as well just in inside the whole thing we were doing here today so we are going to get the bible being read back again
like I said, when I always told my Bible, I feel like a pastor or something. <laughs> it's the Bible that my daddy bought for me. Oh, it's so cool. I was hoping he didn't sign on it, though. I'll sign it myself. And the day that he meets me, he's going to sign it officially. So let's go. Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to shew the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting, is an everlasting kingdom. Sorry, guys, let's take that back. Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how great are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid and thought upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologians and the Chaldeans and the astrologians and the soothsayers. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. First were the visions of my head. First were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto the heaven, and the side thereof to the end of the earth. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto the heavens, and the side thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruits thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the dream, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, an unholy one, came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Thors, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits. Let the beasts be let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from its branches nevertheless leave the stump of his roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruled in the kingdom of men, and give it, it to whomsoever he will, and set it up over it the, bis, the basis of men. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand 
by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruled in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will, and set it up over it the basis of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation therefore thereof trouble thee. <clears throat> the king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretations thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sowest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the side thereof of all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reached unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with a dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break up thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquity by shewing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon? that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, 
and he do work according to <clears throat> and all the inhabitants of the earth are repeated as nothing and he do work according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou at the same time my reason returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and my brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me and i was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me now i nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he's able to abate this is the word of the lord and all the saints shall say ginormous thanks be to god so guys you would have to watch a rebroadcast if you're just coming in we're not just starting right now we're done but there was a whole lot of noise in the background people doing a lot of things here and there listening to messages calling people and all that kind of stuff so that's why we decided that we're going to do the audio bible again by reading this chapter all over at the end so i'm glad to have each and every one of you who came here today, who was a part of a chapter a day. I do not take that for granted. Thank you so, so, so very much. I'm forever grateful. And it's on this note that we'll be wrapping up with a chapter a day for today. I always get to say I love you guys, but you know God loves you way more, way, way more than you can even think, ask, or imagine. Father, we thank you for another amazing session you've given us. We thank you for speaking to us in a very special way, in a very intimate way, for giving us some details that we need to fix about our lives and the lives of those who are around us, oh Lord. Father, I pray that every single person who touches this today, Lord, they're going to have an encounter with you and you alone, and it's going to bring transformation, deliverance, and healing all for your glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. Let your word be engrafted on the flesh tables of our hearts so that we're going to be able to live thereby and we'll become living epistles read of men, that our lives will cause others to come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. Thank you so much because we know you always hear an answer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tomorrow is Daniel chapter 5. Don't forget to read ahead of time. And yes, it's going to be the International Women's Day. Yay! Somebody's excited. So, have a great time, a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, and have a great night to those who are about to go to bed. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Welcome, pretty, pretty mice. Welcome, Uncle Jerome Crooks. Welcome, Auntie Maureen D. Oh, my God. A lot of amazing people joined us later and we didn't see them. Welcome, Amabel Love. Welcome, Jam Doll. Welcome, Coco Melon. Okay, that's an interesting name. Welcome, Silmara, the JC. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Ciao.